Now let's consider the Westie's neck and body. The neck is muscular and well set on the shoulders and is in proportion to the rest of the dog. A too short or too long neck is a fault. The shoulder blades should be well laid back and well knit at the backbone. The upper arm is of moderate length with the angulation between shoulder blade and upper arm sufficient to allow for a definite forechest or overhang. This dog's shoulders are too steep and the upper arm appears too short. The dog lacks a proper forechest. This is faulty. This dog's forequarters are correctly angulated. The shoulder blades are well laid back and well knit with the upper arms of moderate length. The chest is deep, reaching to the elbows. From the front, the breadth of the chest is in proportion to the dog, allowing the elbows to be held close to the body. The shoulders are clean, not loaded or overdone. This dog's chest is too broad and the shoulders appear loaded. This is incorrect. This dog is elbowing out and should be penalized. This dog's forequarters are correct with breadth of chest in proportion to overall size and substance. The legs are reasonably straight, muscular and well boned and are thickly covered with short hair. The feet may be turned out slightly. From the side, you can see that while the forelegs are relatively short, they are of sufficient length to make the dog appear well up from the ground. Some daylight should be seen under the dog. The distance from withers to elbow should be about the same as from elbow to ground. The legs are set well under the shoulder blades. The front feet are round, strong, and thickly padded. Black pigmentation is most desirable on pads of feet and nails, although nails may lose coloration in older dogs. Dew claws may be removed. The Westie's body is characterized by a flat, level top line. The body is compact and of good substance. Ribs are deep and well arched in the upper half of rib, giving a heart-shaped appearance extending at least to the elbows and presenting a flattish side appearance. The loin is short, broad, and strong. Here the loin is too long. The body appears too long in proportion to the dog's height. This dog's top line is too soft. This is an example of a roached back, which is faulty as well. The dog shown here is lacking in bone and gives a racy appearance. Remember, a Westie should always be sturdy and of good substance. This dog's correct body has a flat level top line, deep ribs, and a short, broad, strong loin. The tail is correctly set so that it appears as a continuation of the spine with no apparent croup. It is relatively short and is shaped rather like a carrot. The tail is never docked. It is carried gaily and when erect should never be higher than the top of the skull when the dog is stacked in show position. The tail is covered with hard hair with no feather. This tail is set on too low, which is a fault. Here the rear is too flat behind the tail. It is preferred that there be a good amount of rump behind the tail. This tail is correctly set and shaped. This dog's hindquarters are correct too. The thighs are very muscular, well angulated with short, well-bent hocks. The rear legs are muscular and relatively short and sinewy. These hindquarters are correctly angulated with very muscular thighs and short hocks. The angulation of the hindquarters 
should balance that of the forequarters. From the rear, the thighs are not set wide apart, and the hocks are parallel. Cow hocks are faulty. Note again the powerful muscling of the rear legs. The rear feet are somewhat smaller than the front feet, but are still round, strong, and thickly padded. As with the front feet, dew claws may be removed. 